Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, I'm gonna be comparing all three of the 2018 15 inch MacBook Pros. I have the base model, the mid-spec one, and all the way up to the i9 model with 32 gigabytes of RAM that costs about $1,100 more over the base model. And I'm gonna be looking at Final Cut, Premiere Pro, and DaVinci Resolve with a wide variety of codecs and hopefully helping you make the right choice on which MacBook Pro and which specs you should get. Now, just starting out, I'm gonna say that I have a link in the video description to the one that I would recommend for 99% of you. If you want to take a sneak peek, you guys can go and check that out, as well as a great Windows alternative that I would suggest for most of you if you don't have to have a MacBook or Mac OS. And I will be having a comparison with that video coming up shortly. That's a lot of intro statements. I also wanna say that I'm not gonna be talking about anything other than video editing. I don't want this video to be 30 minutes long. I did a previous video talking about the i9 and the performance differences between uh, these other machines, looking at some benchmarks, looking at clock speeds, looking at temps, all of that good stuff. So if you're interested in the details, go and check that video out. There's a card right there, or you guys can click the box after the video. I think you'll definitely enjoy it. It's a little bit of a rant, but in this one, we're just gonna get straight to the numbers for video editing. For all of you Final Cut editors, especially those that wanna compare these Macs to your own Mac, I'm gonna start off with Bruce X, and here all three of these machines got basically the same score. Next, let's stabilize a 20 second 4K clip. And here in Final Cut, we basically get the same score across the board. Same thing goes with Premiere Pro, other than it taking much, much longer. The score is very similar. But in DaVinci Resolve, we do get a faster time with both the mid and top model that has the 560X graphics card. Now, I do wanna point out that this difference isn't because of the CPUs or anything else. It's strictly the graphics card because the base model has a slower 550 55x graphics card. So if you're editing in DaVinci Resolve and if you're stabilizing footage, I would highly suggest spending the extra $100 to upgrade the 555x to that 560 graphics card. Now, before we move on, I wanted to point something out about Premiere Pro. You guys can see that it's taking way longer, which is usual. Premiere Pro is only using maybe 10 to 15% of the CPU and about 5% of the graphics. And this is why this was the one test where I was really expecting the i9 MacBook Pro to have a good lead over the other two models. Since the CPU is not being maxed out, the graphics isn't being maxed out, uh, it's not heating up as much, and I would expect the i9 to turbo boost closer to their advertised up to 4.8 gigahertz clock speeds. And in fact, it did run higher at 4.1, which is the only time I saw it run at 4.1, but as you guys saw, those numbers are very, very close. So there really isn't a difference stabilizing footage between the three models. Now let's move on to a five minute 4K project with two LUTs and film grain applied. This is 4K footage from the A7S II. And I wanna say Final Cut background rendering is turned off. If you would have left it turned on, it would be much, much faster, maybe three times as fast. Uh, but then we're looking at encoding times, not actual rendering and encoding. So here you guys could see that in Final Cut and in DaVinci Resolve, the scores between the mid model and the top spec model are basically identical. Yes, the base model is slower, but I wanna point out that once again, that is because the graphics card is the limitation. If we would have had the same graphics card as the other two models, which is just $100 more, the speeds would basically be the same. Now, taking a look at Premiere Pro, this is the biggest gap I saw between these three machines in any of the tests with any of the programs, and this is in Premiere, and I'll explain why it's happening, but I wanna point out that this gap isn't that big. If we do the math, it's about seven percent faster with the i9 top spec model compared to the base model which cost me eleven hundred dollars less it has less uh, storage it has uh, less ram and of course the cpu and the gpu so seven percent difference and on the middle spec model it's only about three and a half percent faster now this was very very interesting um, looking at all the charts and uh, looking at iStat menu and intel power gadget premiere pro is taking once again much longer than the other two programs because because it's only using about 50% of the CPU and it's only using about 20% to 30% of the graphics. If we look at Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve, both of those programs can run this timeline, play it back perfectly smoothly, no drop frames whatsoever at full resolution. Where in Premiere Pro with all three of these machines, we have to drop it down 
to half resolution, which isn't the end of the world, that's fine. But I just wanna point out that even though we do see the three and a half and 7% differences in the actual renders at the end, the timeline performance is the same. So it's up to you. Is that couple minutes saved worth it to spend that much more money? I don't think it's really worth it. Um, and I would say if you think it's worth it, I would strongly suggest going for that Windows laptop that I've linked in the video description. Now let's move on to a tougher codec. This is HEVC or H.265 and we're exporting to H.265. It's a 4K project with two lots in film grain applied from the Samsung NX1. And here in Final Cut, the speeds are basically the same and we are actually GPU limited, not CPU limited. And uh, in Premiere Pro, as you can see, the speeds are basically the same as well other than it taking much, much longer. And in Premiere Pro, we're actually CPU limited, not graphics card limited, graphics card is only being used at about 20%. Now let's take it a step further and look at some RAW codecs. We're going to start with ProRes RAW. This was 4K footage shot at 120 frames per second. It was recorded at 4K 60 and then slowed down to 4K 24 in the timeline. This is in Final Cut and the footage is from an FS5 Mark II. And here when we're exporting to H.264, we do see a difference in the top and mid-spec model over the base model. Once again, our graphics card is the actual limitation. Now, if we go ahead and export to ProRes, which is gonna take more use of the CPU, the scores are basically the same, where now we're limited by the CPUs. And because these CPUs under full load, when you're actually pushing them, don't really perform much different between them. I think it's about a 2% difference between the base CPU and the i9 CPU, which costs $400 more. Um, there's really not much of a difference that we're seeing. And I also wanna mention timeline performance. I did not see any difference in smoothness of editing. All three of these machines were cutting that uh, 4K footage perfectly smoothly because it is ProRes RAW, it's really optimized for Final Cut. Next, let's move on to footage from the C200. This is Canon Cinema RAW Lite, as they call it. It's actually very difficult to edit. And here, uh, both with Final Cut and with Premiere Pro, only the base model with the base graphics were slower. So the mid i7 and the i9 had the exact same score. And here, that's once again because the graphics card is the limitation, not the CPU. In Premiere Pro, on the other hand, here our CPU is the actual limitation, not the graphics card, and the results are exactly pretty much the same. Now, as far as timeline smoothness, this is the first time that I actually saw some differences, but with that said, none of these laptops and none of the editors could edit this footage smoothly unless we're dropping down the resolutions quite a bit, where the quality kind of doesn't look very good, and uh, I would have a hard time judging sharpness based on that resolution. And in Premiere Pro and in Final Cut, uh, we're seeing, let's say, uh, 16 FPS with the base model, with the base graphics, and 20 FPS in Final Cut. Uh, this is just playing back if we're on the top graphics card. And in DaVinci Resolve, we saw 21 frames per second with the base model and 27 and 27 with uh, the top graphics card. So DaVinci Resolve is playing it back better than Final Cut. Now in Premiere Pro, I don't have any frames per second because the indicator was all over the place and frames were dropping like crazy. Uh, but I just wanna say, if you're editing with the C200 RAW, I always recommend a very powerful system, either iMac Pro if you are with a Mac and you're tied into the Mac ecosystem, or like an i9, 10, or 14 core uh, desktop system. That would be my suggestion. And finally, let's finish off with 4.5K Red Raw from the Raven. This is with effects. And in all of these programs and with all these MacBooks, the results are very, very close. And in fact, in Final Cut, the middle spec model is actually the fastest, followed by the base model and then the top spec model. And yes, I redid this test and redid this test and redid this test. That is because the i9 model is trying to boost up its clock speeds, it's drawing power. I don't know if there's enough power from the graphics card. In fact, somebody in a previous video mentioned that they looked at all the, all the data and deep analysis with external monitors, and the i9 just doesn't have enough power to be able to do its thing and give enough power to the graphics card. So here, 
yes, the middle spec model is actually the fastest. And that's because it actually ran at 2.8 gigahertz at the end of the render, where the base model ran at 2.7 gigahertz and the i9 model ran at 2.4. So yes, the i9 model, which is rated at 2.9 gigahertz base clock, not turbo boost base clock, actually was running at 2.4, where the other two models were running above their rated boost clocks with the, the base model having the biggest kind of difference in performance over the base rating. Wow, um, that is just very, very interesting. So hopefully these results have been helpful. If they have, please give this video a like. You guys can purchase uh, these machines through the links in the description below. That helps support the channel. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, you guys appreciate all the testing and retesting and retesting. You guys can sign up and just for a couple bucks a month, support me on Patreon. That would definitely be appreciated, especially with the AdSense stuff that has still not been fixed. There's still a small sliver of hope. So uh, yeah, hopefully that gets worked out. But I enjoy doing these tests, even though sometimes my head just feels like it's just gonna explode uh, after all this analysis. But there is more to come. So if you're interested in seeing uh, the top spec model compared to the 2016 top spec and 2017 top spec, that's gonna be coming out. Also comparison with the top iMac, if you're trying to decide between desktop versus uh, on the go editing and to the best Windows alternative, which I have linked down below. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can do that in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your guys' opinions. Make sure you guys are subscribed and more importantly that you guys have that notification bell enabled because YouTube is not showing you all the videos that the channels that you subscribe to are actually putting out. So you guys do not wanna miss out on these upcoming videos. This has been Max and I will see you in the next one.